Welcome to part two of the controversial Cadillacs, the 1986 El Dorado in Seville with John Manugian. If you haven't yet seen part one, be sure to check the link in the description below. And here we resume with John Manugian talking about the 1986 El Dorado in Seville design. Here's John. Another one, uh, more traditional Cadillac-like Hmm. with a very, very architectural grill opening, and then a real thin blade uh, chrome header, just a little touch hmm. of uh, chrome without being ostentatious or over the top. Hmm. We used to say, if it looks like it was hard to do, it must be expensive. And so we would try to do details that looked like they were difficult to execute. And that would include grill textures, very thin chrome headers, thin uh, pencil thin chrome moldings around the D-line, just nice fine details. Now was there any debate, I mean the 76 Seville kind of had this egg crate pattern, you know, and a lot of, quite yes. a few did, but yes. in the 77, 8, 9, you know, the 80 Seville, they had more of the vertical themed grill. Was there ever any debate over to do egg crates versus vertical or? Um, Cadillac was known for both and so we could we could get away with either one as most of these sketches show I was always trying both of them um, this was a much more aggressive uh, grill texture which was probably on El Dorado like but nonetheless uh, I would have I would have proposed black uh, a black grill texture with a, just a chrome header well, we're getting into some of the things that also resemble, at least to my eye, uh, some of the 92, you know, front end a little bit. Uh, know, a base. little bit. Or the Eldorado Touring Coupe. Or the you Eldorado know, some, Touring Coupe, some, yeah. some of these were sort of a mental thing about maybe these could be the touring version versus the, the regular like version. Like this one in particular, just, um, I get a little this bit. This was a Seville. On the side profile here with the door into the roof. Right. And the, so I tried the vertical texture. Uh, a little more prominent with the vertical texture to pull it further away from the Eldorado. Since we were sharing the same hood and fenders with the Eldorado, I wanted to show a difference between mm. the grill texture in the Eldorado and the grill texture in the Seville, hence mm. the vertical texture here. Gosh, that's a, that's a good looking car. Thank you. I like the tumble Thanks. home here too. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, but it does to me, yeah. at least this portion back here kind of it starts to resemble yeah. a bit of the next generation. Yeah, a little bit, a little mean. bit. Um, this was a, this is probably closer to the final yes. Seville design. Um, again, it was, it was pretty much this way, but I didn't show the ribs and I would have had a smoked uh, t uh, tail lamp housing with the red behind mm -hmm. the black glass and then the backups next to the plate. This car, I think, is actually aged pretty well, too. You know, I got to say, I, I saw one of these the other day, and it didn't look bad. No. Because these cars had uh, the wheels were kind of out to the edges. We haven't talked about that yet. We haven't talked about what happened toward the end of this program. We were working with a, a very specific architecture package, if you will. And... At one point, someone in the corporation, very high up, asked the question, are these cars going to be too close to the Chevrolet, the Pontiac, the Oles, and the Buick in size? And it's like the light bulb came on and everybody said, oh, you have a good point there. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> Well, keep in mind, everything had been released. So all the surfaces had been released to engineering. They were, they were on the verge of cutting dies, which is, as you know, as a finance guy, that's a that's the line very had, expensive yeah. proposition. Mm -hmm. You don't go back on that. So they were on the verge of doing that, and they said, time out. We're going to widen these cars 80 millimeters or three and a half inches. That was a huge, a huge deal. Suddenly, but it was for the good because now the cars had a much better stance and a proportion than this very narrow hippo on a bar stool look. It, 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 had, it had presence. 
it had presence. The hippo on the bar stool, yeah. The hippo on the bar stool, we didn't want that. Cool. We wanted a car that had a great stance. And so adding the 80 millimeters in the center line of the car, both El Dorado and Seville, really helped the proportions. And so when I saw this Seville the other day, I said, you know, it, it looks pretty good. Yeah. It looks pretty good. It does. And it, at least Wayne said that uh, at one point they were thinking of putting the V6 in the car because it was so narrow. They couldn't accommodate the transverse V8. Right, right. And so the 80 millimeters allowed them to put the beloved 4.1 liter V8 in there. Thank goodness. <laughs> Here was a situation where common sense prevailed. <laughs> <laughs> and they did the right thing. We actually did the right thing. Can you imagine those cars three and a half inches narrower? I saw them in clay, believe me. I know. It was not did good. You, were you waking up in the middle of the night? In uh, a cold sweat, <laughs> yes. Um, th this was an El Dorado proposal, again, toying with the idea of using the, uh, the formed glass. I was very intrigued by that process. But that is cool. Found out it was very expensive to do that kind of thing. The, the, uh, before the, guys like the, me said, The John. scrap rate for, for Camaro Firebird was astronomical because they couldn't get the glass to sit right. They would heat it up, yep. put it on a form, and the rejection rate was unbelievable. The scrap rate. They're scrapping all these backlights, so I got off of that. Well, they even had to uh, put a power trunk pull down on yes. those cars because yeah, people was, were slamming the... It was a disaster. I'm always very gentle with mine. <laughs> There's no power close. and Good. Uh, Good. Yes. You don't want to break those things. No, I don't. Well, and it, mine's a first year, and it's fragile, shall we say. Yes. Uh, this was uh, one of the first sketches I had done for Seville, where I was going to do a very severe, mm. upright, very slim pillared upper, which was unusual for that time. That wasn't anything that we had done before. Uh, but it was a very slim, light, airy mm. upper, and you've got kind of the 76 Seville style block taillight there, or is that a <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. And you have the 67 Mercury uh, style. There you go. See, so he's dragging back that Ford. It, uh, just, it must have just kind of hit me with a bolt of lightning. <laughs> I was doing the sketch and... Like, gosh, yeah. that'd be a good place to put that, yeah. Uh, Seville proposal. This is cool. Again, uh, this was a more traditional Cadillac egg crate grill, mm. but, the, but the rear was a very clean black smoked glass with a red reflex for the insert. That would look killer with LEDs today. With light pipes that oh, we have today, that would, look killer. that would be awesome. But the technology didn't exist. I mean, it, it was all we could do at this time just to get composite lamps and, and uh, mm. uh, some of the taillight technology. But once LEDs came, it was a whole new ball game. Wow. Now this last one is kind of interesting. You've got You've got like a little basket handle here? Uh, um, that was an Eldorado, and I don't... Looks like there's something going on there with... The no, roof it's, no, it's just it's just the sketch of the interior. This this is a pretty uh -huh. conventional roof. The, the roof panel would have lifted out. Like, I was hoping it had stainless -like. steel <laughs> roof Could have been cap, be, a Beeritz? Beeritz. A Beeritz. Because right. they did have the Beeritz yes, still. Yes, they did. Yes, they, they did. did. And then... Uh, it had chrome... Yes. Uh, moldings that went along the fender. And the half final roof. God help me. <laughs> yes. I remember that. I remember it too, yes. Now what was you know what was really handsome on these cars was the, the touring coupe and the STS. Remember Those the were STS? a little more sedate. They were they were uh, blacked out. A lot of the trim was blacked out. They had non-white walls. They had uh, the badge in the center. Uh, the badge, of the grill. yes. I mean, it was it was a little more geared to the European at the time taste, rather than the domestic taste, which was a lot of chrome, a lot of bright work. The uh, out, the uh, touring versions were much more mm. sedate. These cars, we uh, we were still in that era of. Mm. More traditional looking, traditional looking. Traditional, but not complex, very clean surface. Very clean, not complex, yes. That was to come 30 years later. Very cool, John. Well, Thank you, thanks. I can, uh, what an amazing, uh, amazing artwork there uh, on the program. And I can only imagine that design brief. <laughs> you were just got super excited when they said the wheelbase is going to shrink by, you know, over the foot. The overall length is going to come down by, 
you know, 18 plus inches, go shrink wrap it. Never a dull moment. It, it was it was a very challenging uh, period for Cadillac, and and the product showed it. It was just a very challenging era. And we should probably also add that the 86 versions, particularly the Eldorado, uh, had a very, very flat rear end, which showed yes. up in my sketches. Once those cars were out, it everybody came to the realization that they just weren't quite right for Cadillac. So they added to the quarter and added some nice Cadillac taillights which stood proud of the deck lid. And I believe they were also proud of the deck lid on top. I'd have to go so. back and look at those. After just one year. Yes. They realized it very quickly that it wasn't the right thing to do. Well, thank you, John, for telling another Thanks. unique story. We like unique here. So controversial. Controversial. Unique. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. I think the car aged well, though. I think those Seville's still look. It has. I, I think they're pretty cool. So, well, thanks again, John. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching part two of the controversial Cadillacs, the 1986 Eldorado in Seville with John Manugian. If you haven't yet seen part one, be sure to click the link below and enjoy. Thanks again for watching.